You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. Roller Martin Unfiltered. All right, folks, uh, the people in Ghana are doing their part to ensure that Africans uh, receive the PPE gear that they so desperately need. Are they waiting to order it from China? Nope, they're doing it themselves. Check this out. Happy to be here today. Today we are seeing what Ghanaian ingenuity and industry is about in response to the need for personal protective equipment for our healthcare workers. The president directed that we have these key PPEs, the personal protective equipment, produced in the country. The Minister for Trade and Industry, Honorable Alan Koyot Sherman Ting, took up this challenge and pushed to have five major companies take up the production of key PPEs in the country. We have about 18,000 uh, uh, gowns and then about 11,000 uh, scrubs that have been produced. But, yeah, by the, by the five, together, by the five companies. But, um, as we ramp up uh, production, I mean, these numbers will grow exponentially. And you can see that the quality of the product is, is very high. And the fabric that has been used, uh, incidentally, is also local fabric, uh, but it's not just any fabric. I mean, this fabric uh, is specially produced by uh, Japan Textiles Limited, which is now Votastar Textiles Limited. And then it moves uh, into Akosombo Textiles Limited and then GTP. And then they take it through what they call a process of mesurization. Uh, and then you get uh, this fabric. So this is very high quality uh, fabric. <laughs> Kill the music, please. I'm trying to figure out, Quadricos, um, how is it that we can't be making PPE and mask here? I mean, I'm, I'm seeing all of the, I'm seeing, I mean, uh, DuPont, for instance, uh, got the federal government. The federal government f basically paid the $1 million charter flights. So DuPont, for some reason, had the material here, took it overseas to assemble and flew it back here and then turned around and sold 60% of it to the federal government. So we paid twice. I'm just trying to figure out, there are no places to make a simple stuff in America? Hmm. Roland, 
I think you are addressing, of course, what we already know, and that there is no incentive, of course, to ensure that lives are being saved. We heard what our dear sister Avis already said, what the president didn't do because of the, the lack of response time. It's fundamentally all about profit. And I am absolutely delighted that Ghana has taken the steps to do this, right, so rather than go to China, to Asia, where usually, of course, those products are made. But I also think it's important to note that there are 10 African countries, you know, currently that don't have ventilators. And in some African countries, basic supplies like oxygen and, and soap are needed really to slow down the spread of this virus. And I think while, and this slightly might be insensitive to say, that I am absolutely glad that we're not seeing the devastation in, on the continent of Africa that we are accustomed to seeing when it comes to viruses. Certainly, we are reminded of the AIDS epidemic and, and Ebola, but here, somehow, uh, the, it has not ravaged the continent uh, to the extent, of course, in Western countries. And I think this is absolutely vital for Ghana, as well as other African countries, to, be, to do this. Uh, Avis. Yes, I mean, I, I, I agree. And, and I am glad that uh, Ghana has been able to uh, lend in this effort in a way that also provides uh, opportunities for their population to have gainful employment and really fulfill a worldwide need at this moment. And, you know, it, it's really interesting how the, the global dynamic is shifting. You know, in, in moments of crises and in moments of um, a lack of leadership, like the leadership vacuum, that creates an opportunity, uh, opportunities for new leaders to emerge. And, you know, we've been seeing now for several years uh, that several um, of the fastest growing economies on the planet uh, are uh, found on the continent of Africa, several countries, Ghana being among them. And so, you know, with everything that's going on with a lot of these European countries, that everything that's going on here, everything that has happened in China and other Asian countries, uh, as it relates to uh, just the devastating effects of this pandemic, uh, if Africa is able to remain relatively detached from this plague uh, as it has thus far, we may be beginning to see the very, uh, you know, dawn of some level of an even greater economic and leadership shifting uh, on a worldwide stage, where we can see um, nations that in the past have been seen as sort of in the background, now moving up in the forefront in terms of providing leadership, providing uh, necessary materials to other nations who just a few years ago uh, seem to be the, the most preeminent. I think now we're undergoing, we're undergoing a moment where we might be at the very beginning of what we'll look back one day and say uh, was the dawn of a new world order. So I, I'm certainly hoping that, hoping that uh, our uh, brothers and sisters throughout the continent are able to stay safe uh, and at the same time be able to benefit economically while also providing much needed materials to the rest of the world. Jason, you would think, again, uh, with this here, you would see a far more aggressive attempt uh, in the United States to say, uh, keep the money in-house as opposed to uh, shipping outside. Then you have these stories where some states are saying that the FEMA is literally uh, sabotaging their efforts and hijacking their shipments. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw that and uh, with some of the ventilators in particular. Um, you know, and then the president, you know, gives the ventilators back and says, thank you, Senator, uh, you know, with regard to Senator Gardner in, in Colorado. And in some cases, as you said, just literally just jacking them. Um, <clears throat> and the fact that we're not producing, you know, our own, as, as you stated, some of that is due to deindustrialization. Um, you know, the fact that we, uh, you know, don't produce things here in the United States. And... I will say I'm very also very proud, you know, of, of our African brothers and sisters that are, uh, you know, of their self-determination because we know China, of course, is involved in a form of debt colonialism. 
And so anytime we can cut China out of the continent, I think that that's a beautiful thing. Uh, however, you know, I have an uncle who, who uh, lives in Africa um, as a diplomat, and, you know, testing in Africa is not really up to snuff in many parts. He lives in, uh, in Zimbabwe, and, you know, the, I think they had 400 tests there, and 200-plus went to government officials. So people in rural areas are not getting the testing. So even though, you know, it seems as though the African continent is doing relatively well as opposed to the rest of the world, we can't definitively say that because there has been some hoarding of resources by the wealthy and powerful on the continent. And I don't want to throw, you know, uh, water on the parade, but we there is some things that are going on on the, on the African continent that, you know, aren't necessarily kosher. But this was a beautiful thing, you know, that they're doing there. And, you know, maybe we need to reach out to Ghana and get some of their PPE. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we cer there's certainly things uh, that we need in this Man, country. I want you to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications.